What if you could use any Azure AI Foundry model in your Copilot Studio custom prompts? That's what we're here to talk about today. You can see I've created a prompt called Create Travel Itinerary, and here we can select from a list of prompt models, GPT-41 Mini, GPT-41, and O3. But you can also see another option that says Azure AI Foundry Models, which means we can use any model deployed over Azure. So what models are available in Azure, you ask? Well, we've got some DeepSeek models here. We've got Grok, Mistral, some Microsoft models, even the latest and greatest OpenAI models that haven't quite made it into Copilot Studio yet. So let's take a few minutes and I'll show you how to set this all up. The first thing we'll need to do is go into the Azure portal. And what we're looking for is something called the Azure AI Foundry. And the Azure AI Foundry is where you go to deploy AI models. We're gonna click on create new resource here. I'm gonna give my resource group a name. Let's create a brand new one. I'll pick a name for my resource as well. And I'll select East US for my region. Okay, we'll hit next a couple of times here. And then once I click this create button, we'll wait a few moments for this resource to deploy. And then we can continue on in the foundry, creating and deploying our AI model. All right, that didn't take too long. Deployment only took about a minute or so. So now we can go to the resource that we've just created. And here on the over pa overview page, we can see all of the details about our resource, but we're gonna skip straight ahead to the Azure AI Foundry by clicking that button right there. So if you've never been in the Azure AI Foundry before, this is the place that you go to in Azure to create new AI models and deploy them. You can test them out in something called a playground. You can create AI agents, do fine tuning, really all sorts of good stuff. But today we're gonna to focus on deploying AI models. So go down here to where it says My Assets and click on Models and Endpoints. Then click on Deploy a Base Model. And the type of base model that we're gonna use is a chat completions model because we're working in Copilot Studio with a chat-based agent. Chat-based agent uses chat completions. You can see we have many different models here like OpenAI models, right, GPT. We've got DeepSeek, Grok, Mistral. But today, we are gonna be using a model from Meta called Llama 4 Maverick. And over on this side, you can read up on all the details about this model right here. I'll click Confirm, and when I do this, we come to the deployment screen. So before we deploy, we need to give our model a unique name, and I'm gonna name it after my initials, and then just kind of put the letter X at the end. And here you can see we're using the deployment type global standard. And the deployment type is important because it influences the speed, the performance, the availability of your model, right? Where it's located on the earth relative to you, but not only that, the pricing. So you'll want to go check out the Azure pricing page for Llama 4 Maverick global standard um, in order to understand those costs. Okay, we'll hit the deploy button right here. And this is gonna actually be pretty fast. Here we can see that the Llama 4 Maverick has been deployed. Awesome. And we've got all the information that we need right here in order to connect with Copilot Studio. But before we do this, let's take a quick look at Playgrounds. And we'll click on Try the Chat Playground. Now you'll notice here that when I click on this button, we've loaded up this model that we've just deployed and we have a chat pane over here. This is gonna allow us to test out this particular model before we ever go ahead and use it in Copilot Studio. This is really neat. In fact, you can spin up a couple of different models and try them out for yourself to see which one's gonna give the optimal answer. Uh, over here, we have some model instructions and context, right, this big space. This is where you would put your system prompt. It's something that the user would never go ahead and put in for themselves. Um, but you can apply it to each and every prompt and every chat the user does. And over here, we can type in our test query. I'm gonna copy and paste in our query from Copilot Studio and hit the play button. And what this prompt says is, you're an AI travel agent. 
I want you to help the user create an itinerary. And then the user goes ahead and puts in the city, London, the number of days, seven in this case, travel preferences, all activities must allow cats. Um, yeah, that's kind of my requirement. And then when you scroll down here, you can see that the prompt, the large language model has come back with the response. And this should be similar to what we see inside of Copilot Studio. Awesome. So that's how you create a deployment and that's also how you test it out in the playground. Let's head back into Copilot Studio to connect this model, Llama, with our Copilot Studio agent. I'm gonna hit the X button right here because I want you to see how to do this uh, from scratch. So there's two places that you can go and add a new prompt and hook up the custom model to it. The first is by going in through the tools menu option, clicking add tool, here we can click new tool, select a prompt, and we can start to create our prompt from here. But we're gonna create it in a different spot because we're gonna use this uh, within a topic today. And so I'm gonna create a brand new topic and this topic is gonna be called create travel itinerary. Can never quite remember how to spell that word. And the trigger for this topic the description is going to say this topic will help the user create a travel itinerary. A travel itinerary is a plan for what to do, where to go, and how long when the user goes on a planned trip. We'll hit the save button here because we always hit the save buttons as many, many times as we can. Make sure, that make sure we never uh, lose our work. And then we'll go create our prompt. So here I click add a tool and new prompt. Great. Okay, we'll call this prompt create travel itinerary prompt. And before we do anything else, let's go ahead and connect our Azure AI Foundry model. So here we click on connect a new model and you can see it's asking for some information. So it needs the model deployment name, base model name, Azure model endpoint, API key, and an optional description. And we can get all of this information from the deployment page. Let's go back here just so that you can see how to get to it once again. Go down to models and endpoints. And because it's the only one that is deployed at this moment, it just came up automatically. But you may have to go ahead and, and click on and find the model that you've deployed if there's many. Well, the first piece of information was the unique name of the model. So we get it here from the name field and we copy and paste it, where is it? Into the model deployment name. Then we also want to grab the base model, stick it in right there. We've got the target URI. So this is the URI or URL where this model lives. And then we've got the key and the key is the unique and super safe and secure password that you need to use in order to access the model. Let's click connect and it's going to take a moment to test the connection. So just sit back for a few minutes and let it do that. Wow, okay, that was pretty fast. <laughs> Never know what you're going to get, whether it's going to be slow or fast. Today it was fast. All right, so we can see it connected successfully and now we can use it because it appears in the list down here. That's awesome. Um, one other thing I want you to note is once you connect it in your environment, this environment is called Matthew Devaney Copilot Studio, um, all of the other users in this environment are going to be able to see it and use it as well. And that can be good because many people don't have the ability to go into Azure and set up their own custom model. But if you don't want them using it, that could also be bad, right? So do make sure that you're only deploying these uh, you know, to the specific environment where users are permissioned and you want them to do that. Um, otherwise, you'll get them using the, the custom model and using that instead of the, the ones that are just deployed there. So, okay, so we're gonna create our travel itinerary prompt. So what information did we have in here again? I'm gonna do a copy and paste job because this prompt is really long and then we'll take a moment to read it together. In this prompt, we're an Avil AI travel agent tasked with creating a personalized travel itinerary based on the user's input. 
Your goal is to create an engaging, well-structured and realistic itinerary that matches the user's preferences and the specified location and duration of the trip. Then we're going to provide the, the prompt with a couple, couple of inputs and we'll make those dynamic in just a moment. And here you can see some additional guidelines for instructing the agent on how to behave. But what we want to do here in order to make this prompt usable is add some custom inputs. So for city, we'll create a new input variable and we'll give it London for our test data. Then for number of days, we'll input seven, stay there for a whole week. And again, all activities uh, must allow cats. That should bring us some pretty interesting results. Travel preferences. Oh, great, I can spell today, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, and then because this is all ready to go, we're gonna hit the test button and see what happens. All right, so there we go. Came back with the results. So here's my travel itinerary. And as we can see here, it's gonna suggest some results that let me have cats on my trip. Awesome. I can check into the Kimpton Fitzroy London, a cat friendly hotel that offers luxurious rooms and a welcoming pet policy. Awesome. Well, great, okay. So let's go ahead and hit this save button right here. And then we will finish out the rest of our topic in order to see this prompt working. Next thing you notice about this prompt is there's some values that we're gonna have to have filled in. Hmm, okay. Let's figure out how we're gonna do that. Well, the way we're gonna do it is by adding a question node. We're gonna add three different question nodes. So the first question will ask, what city would you like to travel to? Question mark. And then for identify, the type of entity that we're going to extract is the city. So no matter what the user enters, the prompt is only gonna extract the specific city that they enter from the text string. And we'll name this something a little bit better, VAR city. Let's keep going and create another question. Question number two, how many days are you staying, uh, traveling for? And for this type of question, we want it to be a number. We want it to be a number. We want to know how many days they're staying for. Number of days. Now for question number three. Question number three, do we remember what that is? Travel preferences. So travel preferences, we'll hit ask question. What are your travel preferences. And for this one, we're gonna choose uh, users, user's entire response. And the reason that we're gonna choose that is, well, travel preferences mm, might have a person, place, or thing, or they might have multiple different types of person, people, places, or things, and we can't really predict them. They are, kind of like what people's unique personal interests are, preferences, things like budgets, comfort levels, interests, if they're bringing pets along. So we're gonna choose the user's entire response for that one. Then we just go ahead and load them up in, in the prompt here, right? Connect, connect them to the prompt. So I'll click on VIR city, VAR number of days, VAR travel preferences, and those fun red boxes should go away, but here it says the input number number of days is the incorrect type. So we are going to have to switch that up a little bit. So instead, we can write something like topic dot number of days, add a text very add a text function here. And here we're just saying, okay, number of days, just give it to me as a whole number, but make it a text string, please. And then the prompt is is fine with that. Okay. Then we need to create a new output variable here. So we'll call this VAR prompt output. Hit, 
hit the close button. We want to send a message and that message is going to be the prompt output text, right? And finally, we're going to choose to end all topics here because once this agent runs the topic, I don't want it to do anything else or trigger any other behavior. This is just meant to stop the agent, right? It's tracks. Now I'll hit the save button and we'll go ahead and test our agent out. So let's see what it can do. I'll ask it a question. Can I'm having trouble with caps lock there? Can you please help me create a new travel itinerary? All right. Then the next thing it should do is it should ask me a question, right? It should trigger this topic and ask me a question. What city would you like to travel to? Let's go to London. London's a great place. How many days are you traveling for? Seven. And what are your travel preferences? Must allow cats. Okay, moment of truth here. So now the prompt is thinking, the th prompt is processing, it's all being done over in Azure, and it comes back with this awesome response right here, where you can see that I'll be going to the Kempton Fitzroy London, I'll be going to the British Museum, I don't understand why that allows cats, Buckingham Palace, I guess the Queen's got corgis, or did have corgis, so maybe that's cool. But yeah, this prompt here is all generated by Llama Maverick 4, a custom model from Azure. That's it. That's the video.